job is important, so it's not surprising that politicians often promise their economic policies will create jobs. But is job creation a means to an end, or an end in itself? In keeping with our theme of looking at the wider effects of economic policies, today's discussion focuses on the impact policies that have job creation as a goal. With me to analyze the topic is David Seymour from the Frontier Center for Public Policy. What is the difference between private companies creating jobs and government policies creating jobs? Well, basically, private companies can only afford to pay wages if they create something people will actually buy. Uh, governments, on the other hand, can afford to pay wages out of taxes, so they don't necessarily create productive jobs. Uh, one classic example is the make work schemes during the Depression, uh, where one set of workers dug holes and the other workers filled them in. Now, a private company that did that would go broke, but governments can get away with it if the political will is there. Now, today we don't have any policies quite that blatant, uh, but there are still economic policies that focus on how much work is being done uh, rather than how much wealth is actually produced. What are some modern examples? Well, much of it is in the rhetoric, where politicians talk more about how many people a government program employs or how many jobs will be created by an infrastructure project, and less about what the actual result of the program will be. Uh, another example is saving a factory because it employs people rather than because it produces things people want to buy. Uh, if it did produce things people wanted to buy, it wouldn't be in danger of closing. Uh, so saving it is actually about jobs rather than production in that case. Some labor practices, for example, are designed to maximize the number of workers doing a piece of work. And what exactly is wrong with employment-driven policy? Well, it comes back to overall production. Employment-driven policies might sometimes increase production, but if employment is the main goal, uh, then policy is probably going to increase employment more than production and therefore lower the average production per worker. You're saying it doesn't matter if some people are unemployed as long as production is maximized? Well, well I'm saying I think that's actually a false choice. Employment and production actually go together because when you produce something, it can be sold to others and you can use that money to buy things. And when you do, it creates another job somewhere else. Right. And, and, and when you spend money demanding goods and services, more jobs are created to meet that demand. Uh, but on the other hand, if a job doesn't produce something real that others are willing to work, earn money, and pay for voluntarily, uh, then they won't provide anything for others to work for themselves. So you'd effectively be depriving others of a real job? Pretty much, because others are spending money on subsidizing your job. Uh, they therefore have less, to, less money to spend on goods and services, so they end up creating less jobs elsewhere. That could be seen as the cost of having more people employed. Surely a job is better than no job if it means even less purchasing power. Uh, well, the thing is that there's actually an unlimited amount of work to be done in the world. Uh, in fact, the potential work to be done in the world is, is infinite. I can imagine unlimited things that I'd like people to make and do for me. Um, if work was limited, though, then sure, then it would make sense uh, to spread work around. But it doesn't make sense to spread around something that's actually unlimited, especially if your make work schemes actually destroy work by making people produce less. So you're actually trying to say that if creating jobs for some in the short term reduces what the average worker produces, then it means less jobs for all in the long term. Yes, well, go governments that really want to create jobs should pursue policies that allow workers and entrepreneurs to maximize productivity. That creates more jobs in the long run. Whereas any policy that touts employment instead of production is going to reduce overall production. It may therefore shift jobs, but it won't actually create them. To summarize, jobs are vital to modern life, so it's not surprising that job creation is a common aim of economic policy. However, when job creation becomes an end in itself, it defeats its own purpose. While jobs may come into existence as advertised, they often mean more workers are producing the same output as before. As a result, the purchasing power of each worker is reduced, lessening his or her ability to create real jobs by demanding goods and services. In our next episode, we tackle tariffs and ask who is really protected by trade barriers. Until then, I'm Jamie Stevenson, and this has been On the Other Hand. Mm -hmm.